Hello and welcome to another AGK tutorial. This is going to be a basic thing about sprite collision, um, just to show you people, new guys really, um, how to get it working. So let's create a new project. I'm just going to do a genetic project. I don't want to use percentage. These ones are percentage based resolutions. It doesn't make much difference. It can actually be better if you're working on multiple resolutions to use these, but I'm just going to use genetic project. Project, not project. Okay. Uh, yeah, skip that. I'm terrible. I should turn it off so I never see it, but I'll just, just skip it every time. Right, I'll call it collision. Mm -hmm. Yep, collision will do. That will call tutorial, I suppose. Right, let's open up the main and the setup because I have to match the resolutions. So actually, let's just put this at 640. Don't have to match the resolutions, but you get black borders otherwise. That drives me nuts. I, I always do that. Right, set virtual resolution. 640, 480. I'll get rid of print hello world. That's not needed. Right. Oh, I'll put, we'll put the basics in. Oh, God, I'm always doing this. It's easy. There we go. Right, that's basically it. Let's just check it runs. Should do. Yep, black screen. Super duper. Right. I haven't got any media for this. Don't need any. I'm just doing basic stuff. So first of all, we want to make a main sprite for the player, I suppose. So we'll call it player. And we'll create sprites. Zero. Because I haven't got an image. I'm not loading an image. Zero. We'll make a sprite. Well, we'll, see, we'll show you. Make a sprite, there you go, top left. 10 by 10, automatic default size. Without an image. You can add an image later, but you can change it around, it's not a problem. Uh, now, I'm going to want to position that, so I'm going to go, I'm going to set some variables to position it. So x equals 320, y equals uh, hmm, 20, 20, that'll do. And then we want to just set the sprite position. Well, you probably don't need to do it here. I'm just used to setting it up. So come on, y. There you go. That'll position it in the middle. There. There we go. Level 8. Now we want something to hit it and to check the collision, basically. So I'm going to make a few sprites here. So I'm going to make a, an array. Um, we'll call it mine for now, and we'll give it 100. That should do. Right now, we want to make this so we'll, we'll do a loop for n equals 1 to 100. Next, n. And we're gonna go. We're gonna make the sprite. So we'll use the array to make the sprite. My name in your square brackets for arrays. Create sprite and zero again because I'm not using the image. And we'll set the sprite position. And now uh, we just want to make this random, so we'll go random. Oops. Go random. Random. Come at 255. 255 is the opacity. So if you want to make it, you know, you could set that to random as well and have random transparency levels, but uh, I'll leave it at 255. And we're going to go. This is the X, so we want to go. Mm, we'll start from 20. Um, it's 640 across, so we go to 620, because it's minus 20. That'll give us a little gap, so it's just. looks prettier. Uh, 
and again for that that's the Y so we're going to want I'm going a bit further this time 30 comma 450 oops 450 yep yep don't do maths while I'm recording especially when you're not good at maths not me um, set sprite size we'll set the size for this because we don't want them the same size as the player because they will be at the minute because I haven't set the player uh, so we make them half the size of the player 5,5 because the default for this is 10,10 ,10. and that'll do it well yeah we'll oh unknown parameter I'm 15 what have I done and then random, random, oh yeah, that done. Um, oh, I'm going mad. I'm thinking changing colours here, so we don't need that random. Ignore that, right, two randoms, there we go. Oh, no, I'm, st I'm still wrong. Hold well on, let me just see what I'm doing. Set for position. That's the sprite number, that's the X, that's the Y, and... Oh, God, blimey. I am thinking of colours. Ignore me. Right, there we go. We've got a hundred random created sprites scattered about and they never go over the edge because I've just put that little border. Plus that little border stops them from hitting this. It's a simple way to make sure it's it's not touching that to start with. So uh, let's just make this a bit better. Uh, I'm going to put a colour in there. That's what I was thinking of in my mind. Um, on my head of myself. So let's, let's just, it's, you don't need to obviously, this is just to make it look a bit prettier. So set the sprite of mine, comma N, and then again we're going to have the randoms, and this time we'll have three. Ha ha. Random. Random. 255, yes. Now this, I'm going to use. 10 because I don't want black. 255, don't mind white. Because if you have 0, comma 0, comma 0, it's going to be black and you're not going to see it, so it's pretty useless. 10, 10 by 10 by 10 probably is going to be very hard, so. But uh, that will do for a test. Right, so that should set the sprite's colour, and that's what I was thinking I was doing earlier. That's why I was going a bit strange. There you go, very pretty. Little coloured sprites ready for the player to walk around and see if you can hit them. So, we need to go into the main loop. And I'm going to do, instead of doing everything in the main loop log I've been doing also, I'm going to use a go sub this time. So, we'll do go sub control and control return. You know, it's a libel, you need the car one at the end. And that's not Lucas, I haven't done that. Right. Um, this is fairly uh, familiar, I'm sure, I'm sure, if you've watched any of my tutorials. You get your key state. That's going to be 39. This one. Indeed. And we just go x equals x plus 1. Copy that. Down. Minus 1. And that's 37. And then we'll do the up and down. Y equals y. And y equals y. Those and um, that's going to be is it 40? 40 or 38? 50, 50, 40. I'm sure it's 40, and that'll be 38. So that should technically move around. Let's try, and it's not moving around. Oh, of course not, of course not, because at the minute I'm setting the sprite position here just to set it up, like I say you don't really need it because it'll do it as soon as it comes into here anyway so let's just pop that in there so we're repositioning the sprite at x comma y after it's gone to control and it'll work out x and y from whatever you press so that should move about 
Okay. We're not colliding. Because I've got no collision card, obviously. So that's going to be pretty easy. Right, so what we want next is a collision. So we'll go sub collision. And we'll make collision label return right now you've got to check every sprite so you're going to need another loop equals 1 to 100 oops next and line oh no 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 I'm ahead of myself, let me see. Right, so we're doing a loop and we need to check the collision. So if get sprite collision. La la la. You can see I'm a typical programmer, I can't type. Um, brackets and it's player, comma mine n. And basically, just greater than zero. That should do that. And if so, basically, the collision will be returning zero when it's not hitting, and obviously, as soon as it hits anything, it's going to be greater than zero. So it'll decide it's hit something, obviously. Right. So we're doing simple. So we'll use a print. Bit. Uh, in fact, we'll be posh. We'll go plus str, which is a string, it converts it to a string. And we'll use mine n. So, I don't know if you can hear that, but the tap man's coming past. Holy crap, that's loud. <laughs> oh well, that's a bit of a bit of musical uh, interlude there. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Right, so that should work there. Let me just check. Oh, her hit. Right, so that'll print what's hit and what sprite it's hit, hopefully. Let's have a look. Yay! You see, all the sprites when you auto generate them are always starting from 10,000, so you can see that. 10,000 and there we go, 10,020 there. Yep, that's working fine. No problem. How was that? And that's pretty much it, really. But we'll, we'll go a tiny bit posher. Um, we'll put in a little flag, hit equals one. Um, and we'll go wait time hash equals timer which will get the current timer plus one which will add a second on um, and we want out of the, uh, the loop really don't need it in there if timer is greater than or equals as well as wait time hash hit equals zero and if now this I don't think will work well it will but it'll work once and that'll be the end I'm guessing oh no it's not oh of course not of course not right well that it's it's working but it's not doing anything uh, what I need to do is put around control if it equals equals zero, there we go. And if quick and easy way of doing it. All right, so hopefully it should equal one, and it'll equal zero as soon as white time's down. But again, it's still not going to work. There you go. It's hit. Seconds over, and and I can't move. I can't move. And I know why that is, it's because it's still hitting, it's always hitting it, so hit is always going to equal 1. So, 
it's supposed to be a mine so it's supposed to blow up isn't it so basically if we put in here set sprite visible mine n comma zero so that should make the mine disappear but it still isn't resetting it because obviously there's nothing to reset it so it's it's making it disappear and it's stopping you moving because obviously you're setting hit to zero here, you're setting hit to zero one, but it's still colliding. And you think, well, it's not colliding because it's disappearing. But all you're doing is you're setting the sprite to be visible or not visible, and it still collides with that. So if you put a little check here and get a sprite visible, I n n. Uh, equals one because obviously it needs to be visible uh, that should sort that out I think if not I'm pretty certain it should so hit up and then wait a second and let you carry on there we go and that's basically sprite collision very simple uh, in fact let me just show you something else before I finish Let's put in at the start. So put it here. Set physics debug on. on. I can't type. There we go. Set physics debug on. on. Right, run that. Oh. Oh, you don't need that. Alright, okay. Right now you can see it's changed it a bit. There's little tiny boxes around there. Can I just maximise that a bit? Boxes around the edge. That just shows you the actual collision shape. And they're all squares, so you don't need to set anything with this. It also slows it down a little. But you can see the sprite's still there, it's just invisible now. So that's it for now. I'll probably go a bit further and do um, you know some animations and some images and just show you what difference it makes because you can't just have basic square sprites then. So until next time, I'll catch you later.